Hello all, it's me, your man, the silly Scotsman, the Virgin King, the Sheep Wielder. And I'm back with a new video. While I'm focusing on generations with other shit, why don't I take a crack at Studio Series Wave 1, the first eight figures of Studio Series. You know, we're up to number 100 at the point of my recording this, even though the last five are missing, but that's not the point. So I thought, let's have a bit of fun. Let's just have a look back down memory lane. Why don't we just start from the beginning and see how far Studio Series has come. But before we get into the video, let's have a word from today's sponsor, my Discord. No, they're not actually sponsoring me, but we've got shit memes, we've got shit humour, we've got just a load of shit. That's why I've opened the Sheep Wielders Shack of Shit. Links to join will be listed below in the description and probably in the pinned comment. But enough self-promotion, let's just get into the video. He's not in my collection. I used to have him. He was a piece of shit and fell apart all the time, so I got rid of him. The one you can currently see on screen instead is SS27 Clunker Bumblebee. Without going into too much now, because I'll save that for when I get to him. Long story short, he's the better version of the 76 Camaro. So Stinger transforms into a fully licensed Pagani Huarie... Huari? Huario? Something I'm too fucking poor to ever afford, so I'm not worried about it. In this mode, he captures the look of his vehicle mode on screen. I would like to think he does if he's officially licensed. Generally speaking, this vehicle mode holds well together. I don't really have any complaints about it until you look at the weapon storage. He comes with four shurikens. I'll go more into them in robot mode. In vehicle mode, they store underneath. You've got two sticking out the side and two underneath. Because you've got two sticking out the side, it completely ruins the illusion of fancy car and just makes me think, who the fuck's the bell end driving that really fancy sports car with a saw blade sticking out the side? And then I realised I live in the UK and odds are it's probably fucking at least ten of them because the UK is like mad fucking max at the minute. As for the two underneath the vehicle, they stop it from sitting down properly. Now I thought I mistransformed this, but then I looked. That's just how it is. I just tried switching it around to see, maybe maybe that isn't, maybe the problem's me here. I tried swapping it around, it was even fucking worse, so uh, yeah. I'd also like to make note that the, there's apparently a running variant, where you can get one with the two wing mirrors, which is the one I've got, the one with one wing mirror, and the one with no wing mirrors. It's essentially saying having a complete figure is now a variant. Personally, I think that's the funniest shit I've ever heard. Bruh, how are we using the word variant here? His transformation also isn't the greatest thing in the world. I find it a bit fiddly, a bit twisty. He reeks of prematureness. And not in the same way that I reeked of premature on my wedding night. Because he's such a complicated design being done for the first time in a new line, they struggle to find the correct balance for this guy. And it bleeds into the transformation especially, just making it all a jumbled mess of parts colliding. And it's one that I'm just generally not that keen on doing. You know, like prematureness. In his robot mode, Stinger takes all the design cues of being a, a remodeled bumblebee and takes all those cues and proceeds to yeet them into the nearest freeway. Instead, Stinger decides to adopt a new approach. Just doing his own fucking thing, really. Fair play to the lad. I feel like with Stinger, you could totally pass him off as a live-action cliff jumper, and no one would argue it. In his robot mode, Stinger has fairly standard articulation. No waist articulation, which is a common theme in studio series. No ankle tilts. That wouldn't become a thing till next year. His hands are moulded into the arm, so good luck getting anything out of that. Heads on a ball joint. Unfortunately, so are the rest of his collarbones, so they come if you even try to so much as move the head, even in the slightest. I must admit the detailing on Stinger's head is actually pretty good. He definitely looks like a fucked up angry bumblebee that just wants revenge for uh, reasons. Mounted on his right arm, you can see the Stinger cannon. I just made that name up. Is it good? I was always fairly confident that that arm cannon was never arm mounted but instead that it was his arm. Granted, this is the same movie that told me the consent laws in Texas, so I'm not gonna listen to it too much. Accessory-wise, Stinger comes with four shurikens that he cannot hold and cannot do anything with other than just fucking lose them. Overall speaking, though, I do feel like Stinger is hampered by being the second Studio Series figure out. Over the five years Hasbro's done the Studio Series, they've gone on to improve their craft for how they actually work these designs. As it stands, He's alright. He's showing up. He's doing the bare minimum. And quite frankly, that's all we need from a character who's never had a toy before. Crowbar shares the same vehicle mode as the Last Night Berserker. Probably a couple of minor changes. Fundamentally, same vehicle. Can't really say too much about it. 
I lied. Look at the arse. What the fuck is that? So because he's the one with all these dreads that are just fucking unnecessarily long, they have nowhere for them to go other than out the arse end of the vehicle. And like I suppose if you close one eye, and like close the other one as close as you can get, as close, closer, ah, that's better. In addition to this, the vehicle mode is just littered with panel lines. It is what it is. They transform, some do it better than others. I imagine if it wasn't for the bouncing ball of dreadlocks, the vehicle mode would hold slightly better together because it wouldn't be that rubber element trying to push its way out. Also, fun fact, there is weapon storage for this guy, and it's not as obtrusive as Stinger's, because it's even fucking worse than Stinger's. What is that? Why am I wasting my time doing this? Mine's only two figures in, I'm already about ready to give up. Transformation to robot mode isn't anything too terrible, but I'm only, I mainly want to take this time to moan about transformation to vehicle. Transformation to robot is like watching that one scene where Hatchet gets thrown into the car by Mirage. It just explodes from the inside. Trying to put that back together is like trying to get a rabid honey badger into a shoebox. Now fully transformed up, we can see the true differences between Last Night Berserker and Studio Series Crowbar. As you can see, Studio Series Crowbar is a fucking mess. Don't believe me? Just have a look. So he's got all these chain things hanging off that are meant to simulate his dreads. However, unlike any fucking dread before him, they're not attached to his head. What's the fucking point? There was an issue with the Berserker mold where the door panels would pop off frequently. So they fixed that, they fixed it in place, and that's it. The weapons, they didn't do anything with. Like literally, I would've took anything fucking else rather than these piece of shit rubbery weapon that he can barely fucking hold. No wrist articulation? I think this is becoming a running theme here. And just generally not pleasant. Like, you look at this guy, he genuinely looks concerned. And I'm like, why are you so concerned about? But I suppose it would be the concern of, this is my first impression. I gotta really wow these guys. And then stepping out on the stage during the talent competition, getting ready to belt your fucking heart out, and instead you absolutely shit it all over the stage. Would I say that Crowbar looks accurate to the source material? I don't know. Would I say that the Queen shit in the woods? I mean, I guess. What the fuck do you want from me? This fucking bitch ratchet. He's basic. Minimal details. Although granted I give them credit for painting the light bar, the headlights, the roof lights, the red stripe along the side, the Autobot symbol on the shoulders, the fucking doors because they decided to make it out of clear plastic. God fucking damn it, they started early. And apart from that, all the rest of it is just... I suppose it's technically accurate, which is the best kind of accurate, but at the same time, it's boring. Like, there's nothing I can say, there's nothing of interest that I can say about this vehicle mode. It's accurate, sure it's accurate, don't mean shit. Like, you know, at least the other two we've had something to say, you know. I got Stinger looking like the kind of car that's going to cut me off on my 25 mile commute to work at 5am in the morning. Why did I just say 5am in the morning? And we've got Crowbar who's literally spewing dreadlocks out of his ass. And then we just get to Ratchet. I don't know. Maybe I'm just expecting too much. Maybe I'm just expecting too much, you know, to have something to be happy or be sad about. Maybe I'm just expecting too much, you know, by, by not getting what I want of just some sort of basic stimulation. Maybe. Maybe this is all just a bit too much. Maybe, maybe life is meant to be this way. You know, maybe it's just one continuous, never-ending stream of consciousness where everything does and doesn't happen to you all at the same time. Hey, uh, it's me. Just drop it in to see how you're getting on, see what you think of the uh, the new video. Well, I just wanted to let you know that you're my favourite and that it would mean the world to me if you could like, comment, share the video, share it with your friends, share it with your family, your Sunday school group, those extremists you started chatting to on the dark web, anyone. I won't mind. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, back to the video. I don't know where the fuck I went there, but never let me do it again. Going on to transformation, it's basic. Let's just get onto the robot. In his robot mode, Ratchet looks exactly like you'd expect. Lime green, unpainted details, questionable posability, a big fucking backpack, and an okay accessory. It becomes apparent in this mode that Ratchet was indeed either directly inspired or essentially just remade from the Dark of the Moon one. I'm pretty sure I saw somewhere some designer say there is no intentional link between Studio Series Ratchet and Dark of the Moon Ratchet. In terms of posability, it's fairly stock standard stuff. He's got weird as fuck shoulders, he's got questionable fucking ankles, he's got a big ass fucking backpack, he's got a swivel for a head. He's just ratchet, you know, he's just a vibe. He's the man, he's here. There's not really too much to say about him. Genuinely, there's not really too much to say about him. Like, a shit figure I can talk about for days, a good figure I can talk about for less time, a boring figure? Hmm. 
I should have just done this one as a short. As you can see, Ratchet comes with a saw blade accessory. He does not live with the saw blade accessory. He lost custody of the saw blade. The saw blade lives with Studio Series 14 Ratchet. Maybe if you were better, you'd keep him. I don't have him. I, I didn't get him. This was at the point where I wasn't trying to replace the old collection. This was when I was just trying to add to him. He wasn't good enough to replace Battleblades Optimus from Hunt for the Decepticons. And he wasn't good enough to be replaced by SS44, the Dark of the Moon Optimus. I'll get to him one day. Moving on. Wait a minute, I know you. Yeah, you're just the Dark of the Moon one, but bigger and actually an improvement and not just similar but not the same. Oh, it's nice to see you doing well for yourself. I would generally say speaking that this Starscream happens to be the best Starscream jet mode I think we've had for anything below a leader class. Maybe I'm wrong in that take. Maybe I don't give a shit. On the surface you've got all the detailing, the white outlining, the insignias, the cockpit with the clear orange and a seat inside it, you know, because that's what a cockpit tends to fucking have. Here's landing gear. He's got dedicated weapon storage on the underside at the back of the vehicle. As well as that, the underside is just littered with 5mm ports. One under the wing, one under the tail fin, and just one under the main fuselage of the jet. Mirrored both sides. As well as that, he has a 5mm stand port. Fine. No, he doesn't. He has a 3mm stand port directly in the centre of the jet. So if you want some swooshy, swooshy f Why can't I say this? If you want a swooshy picture, that's not even what I meant to so. say. Then you've got one. And as well as just being an upscale of the Dark of the Moon in his jet mode. The transformation is just an upscale of the Dark of the Moon. Not really much to say about it. I appreciate having these tabs in the chest. I genuinely can't remember if the other one actually had these. I haven't had it in about four years. All in all, I just appreciate this figure and how straightforward it is. And you know, just generally fucking interesting. Okay, this is where being essentially an upscale Dark of the Moon Starscream, why do they keep taking from Dark of the Moon? Really comes into play. Because essentially the Dark of the Moon Starscream, outside of the Hunt for the Decepticons one, which while, yes, why did they not use that one? No, because that thing's just a fucking beast in all the best ways. I can see why they didn't touch it. Through using the Dark of the Moon mold, we get our best Voyager scale Starscream yet, because that Dark of the Moon mold was poseable, was interactive, it was just fun. It was sturdy, secure, solid. Starscream. Skeletor. In this robot mode, he has good detailing, good paint apps. He's generally just good. There's nothing I don't like about this Voyager mold. Like, I could, yeah, okay, I could make the comment of, oh, the back's a bit shit. Bro, I don't have my figures back facing out, do I? I don't give a shit. Like, all in all, Starscream's just fucking exceptional as far as a robot mode goes. You know, there is a the whole thing of his hands can't hold. He doesn't have five millimeter pegs in the hands, but then there's also the thing of, he don't fucking need them, and he's got five mil pegs on the arms. Accessory-wise, he comes with a missile launcher, which is exclusive to him by folding the hand down, and plugging it into the back. That is exclusive to him and no one else can use this weapon unless they use the 5 mil port. Don't know where I was going with that bit. He was later redecoed into the Revenge of the Fallen one, i.e. the only other Starscream deco we got in the movies, but I'm not going to talk about him yet. Leave me alone. Wait a minute, why are you bringing up the Revenge of the Fallen one? Why the fuck are you bothering me right now? Let me do my thing. Interestingly enough, when this figure first released, it was also teased to have the saw blade accessory. You know, the saw blade accessory that came with that Revenge of the Fallen one. There you see, I linked it all back in. But uh, I've got nothing else to say about it. It's great. If you can get this mold at any point, I would recommend it as a piece that I am reviewing properly without just taking the piss. But what the fuck, this isn't the next figure. No, it's not the next figure because this is the e-begging portion of the video. This is the part where I direct you to my Patreon. So if financial support to the channel is something you would be willing to consider, visit the link down below. If not, just ignore this bit. You're good. You're welcome here anytime. Free house. But anyway, I think I hear the video starting back up again. So uh, I'm going to fuck off in a bit. When I first saw the images of this T-Rex mode for Grimlock, I thought one thing. And then I thought something else. The fact that in the space of four years we managed to go from a leader class T-Rex that was too long and looked like a fish, a Voyager class that just looked like a bit of a bulldog, really, to this fucking monstrosity that looks like a fucking Digimon. Skull fuck mon, I choose you, yeah? Is astounding and I love it. Of course this Dino mode isn't without issue. Why the fuck does the tail look all like this? What is this bit hanging down here? 
why can't the head really move, you know, anywhere? Visually looking at it, we're probably the best we're ever going to get unless they do an NPM. But from where I'm sitting looking at it now, it does without fail. I can't fault it. I do wish we got a to scale Night Prime because I think that would have gone really well with this release. You know, just like the other thing that would have gone really well with this release would have been the other fucking Dinobots. So I don't know which came first here, right? I don't know if Kingdom Megs is based off the original in terms of transformation. But the two transformations are verbatim. One arm becomes the head, the other arm becomes the tail, the legs sort of just compressing themselves and then attached to a rotated chest which has been compressed down. When the fuck was that actually such a widespread thing? Because I just can't believe I only just noticed it. I don't hate it. It's just a weird thing I wasn't expecting to see, you know. Like I'm not expecting to go out there and see my dad. Actually I'm going to be really concerned if that happens. What the fuck's he doing here? In this fucking robot mode, Grimlock is just fundamentally the centerpiece of any studio series display. Fuck. I think if you had a Grimlock display, unless you got like something absurd, he would stand out. I just fucking love the broad appeal of this guy. He's just fucking every stereotype of every warrior culture throughout history crammed into one figure, given a lick of paint that's been made out of dinosaurs and dragons of a fucking alternative metal earth, and he just looks fucking stellar. It's a bit sad that he's only got the one hand because the other hand's, you know, a fucking mace. But at the same time, it works for the character. You get a relatively clean robot mode with Grimlock. There is virtually no kibble. Everything is incorporated into the design in some way or another. You know? You've got a lot going on around his hip area because you've got the skirt and the coattails at the back. I don't really know what that's meant to be, but it looks alright. You've got a faux head on one shoulder and the actual head on another shoulder. His T-Rex arm sort of hang off his one arm. How this figure comes about is just impressive generally speaking. This was where Studio Series first gripped me. This was where I realised, hang on, we're dealing with something a bit different here. This guy in Blackout showed me, right, this is something that's going to be worth paying attention to. This isn't going to be something that I'm going to want to just skip to the side. Grimlock, as a Studio Series figure, it's fantastic. I do admit I'm curious to see what he would look like if they made him today, as opposed to back then. But I think they pretty much hit the nail on the head with this one. I'm happy with it. And that's the main thing that matters, because I'm the one making the video. Holy fuck. This fucking guy. So this guy was a widely wanted figure for years. Like I want to say he came out 11 years after the first film. I want to say he was wanted as a leader for 11 years. In this helicopter mode, he's accurate. Well, fairly accurate. I can't think of any major inaccuracies. He's got relevant tamper graphing, he's got relevant details. The only thing that kind of stands out a bit weird is on the back tail rotor, it literally has blackout written. And I just, I don't think it ever said that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think it did. You can also see present, he's got the relevant USAF 4500X markings, he's got the Air Force insignia as present on Starscream. He's also got no ass. For some reason, they just didn't give him one. I'm well aware that I think there was a third party knockoff or upgrade kit that filled this space in and made a little desert diorama for Scorponok. This area literally exists just for Scorponok to chill out. More on him in a bit. You can just see with the actual fucking size of this helicopter. Like, it's just fucking crazy looking at it. Even now, because I haven't looked at this helicopter in fucking years. There is some tolerance issues, specifically if you look at the top just under the rotor. It doesn't quite peg together as well as you'd hope. But it's alright, it holds together fairly well. As well as this, the underside of Blackout is fairly clean. You can't see anything that gives it away that he's a robot. Unless you count the hands, but then again, I wouldn't count those as hands even in the robot mode. I just love this helicopter, it's just fucking huge. Blackout's transformation, however, is just fucking... It's excessive, it puts the ass into asinine. I like it, but it's so complicated. Granted, for the exchange of accuracy, I am 100% behind it. I, I get it, I'm not going to be mad about it. But, you know, I've got to complain about something because that's just who I am. So in his robot mode, we get the best blackout I think we've ever gotten. I mean, granted, it's not a difficult thing to achieve when your competition is... And... And let's not forget... Oh, almost forgot about that one. You know, in the robot mode, they finally bulked him up. Giving him a bit of scale, giving him a bit of weight, giving him a bit of something about him. He no longer suffers from animated lug nut syndrome. I don't know why I call it that, because Blackout did it first. Now he's one of the biggest. Like, you compare him to a lot of the Studio Series Decepticons, he's up there. He's not the biggest, but he's up there. But in addition to that, it's also nice just to have one that's poseable. One that you can fucking move. 
you know, not to say that the Voyager wasn't, but it wasn't really. Too much helicopter hanging off its back. Whereas this one, it's got just the right amount. Especially now because you make use of the tail propeller as the bladed weapon that he has in the film. As well as that, he's got loosely articulated fingers. When I say that, I mean the hand folds down and the thumb opens up. That, that's it, that's literally all I mean. He can't hold fucking anything. Unless you want to count this that someone came up with. I wouldn't, but then I'm just a contrarian, fuck me. But now, once you get past that overtly complicated transformation, which is whatever, this guy is part two of why Studio Series just fucking works so well. This guy's the perfect introduction to the new leader class of we're going with detail and we're going with a bit of scale. And I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see Blackout finally get the attention he deserves. Also, that face sculpt is just gloriously fucked. It genuinely looks like it's been ripped straight from the movie. And Blackout's distinct because he comes with an accessory in the form of Scorpionok. Scorpionok is slightly articulated. His arms can swivel and the tail can bend. But this was the beginning of something that Studio Series would continue to do. It continued a theme of leader class figures and coming with a smaller accessory figure. Typically, it was a character who was associated with that character. Not always, but generally. I mean, what can I say about this Scorpionok really? It's well detailed. I can't complain too much about it. I would say it's a shame it can't transform, but every time they made one that did transform, it was shit. I do think it's worth saying that this Scorpionok does actually have the ability to clip onto Blackout's back so that he could replicate the scene from the movie where Scorpionok shoots out Blackout's back. You know the scene I'm talking about. Why am I describe? Why am I wasting my time describing this? Also as a quick note, none of these guys feature the cardboard diorama which all Studio Series figures come with. Put simply, I don't fucking have them. It goes in the, it goes in the recycling with the rest of it. I don't have the space or the inclination to keep them. So there we are, we made it to the end. Wave one, done. That was a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Probably because I don't own a fucking quarter of the figures. All in all, I feel wave one was a solid introduction. Granted, you started the deluxe wave and it's a bit shit. But then you jump up to Voyager, Starscream's solid. Yeah, it's a fucking reuse of a deluxe mold, but it's solid. Then you get to the leader classes, and you see we're starting something truly fucking special. But Joe Hasbro, that little cunt, wherever he is, was on to something with this one. And I, I gotta respect him for it, because it's still going today, and it's just gotten better. This is just the start of something beautiful. Speaking of the start of something beautiful, if you click any of the links on screen, you might be on at the start of something beautiful. As for me, I'm gonna go off into the wilderness and try and find some money because my mic broke before I recorded the ending. If you guys would be kind enough to uh, peep the Patreon, I might be able to buy a new mic and not feel guilty about it. It's either that or the dog goes hungry. <laughs> Bye.